Well, there we go. That's the second half of a lovely morning's brace of Cotswold Carp. Both fall into my favourite rig presentation, a rig I've got so much confidence in. And in fact, I've had quite a few queries on uh, why I use it, the components that I use. So I thought I'd give you a bit of an insight into why I think this rig is so good and the benefits of using it. Well, when it comes to rigs, it's such a personal choice. But one thing I think is really important is you must have confidence. I mean, confidence is such a great string to your bow and it adds an element to your angling where you can just focus on the other important things like location, bait application. And I think another thing which is really important when it comes to cart rigs is consistency. Now I use this rig exclusively. I don't change it. I use it for both boilers, particles, pop-up, bottom baits, wafters, anything in between. And it's just my go-to rig. Once I've got the rig nailed, I can put that down and focus on all the other important things in carp fishing and let's face it there's so many factors into why we catch and why we don't I don't want to be putting much energy into thinking about rigs this comes out I get it near some feeding fish and invariably if I got those things right it results in a bite when it comes to carp rigs you want something that doesn't tangle this ticks that box but you also want something that is a really effective hooker now when it comes to um, effectiveness what do you want from a rig well you want a land to hooked ratio and on this rig it's very good i think i've landed everything i've hooked i've had one hook pull in two years and secondly i always inspect the hooks where they are in the fish's mouth and 99.9% .9 of the time they're exactly where i want them about an inch back smack bang in the bottom lip and it's about as good as it gets so uh, there's no reason to change like i say if i blank I don't blame the rig, which is really important. I blame my choice or the weather conditions or the location. This isn't the reason why I haven't put a fish on the bank. So let's look at the benefits and why it's so successful. Well, first and foremost, I can change the hook after every single fish. Now, uh, like I mentioned in a previous video, my friends kind of chuckle really, is this is the same boom that I've had on for the best part of two years now you might chuckle at that and think what he's fishing the actual same rig well i am purely because i can change the hook which we'll come on to later um, and this little bit of tube and if it perishes i can change that too now the rig itself fairly long in today's rig world i guess that's about i should imagine it's about nine or ten inches a couple of blobs of putty up the up the hook link this one is larger than the smaller one which helps to kick out the rig and this one is wrapped around a knot which i'll come on to in a minute but it's a little bit more putty and i use that because it pulls the hook down into the fish's mouth that's really really important even when you're fishing a bottom bait you may look at this and think this is a pop-up rig but that weight has a very important function now the other thing which i think is really crucial is that when carp feed nobody can argue with the fact they are sucking and blowing elements off the bottom in small particles boilies and that sucking and blowing motion is a deciding factor whether the carp want to keep the food items in the mouth or spit out what they don't want. If they want to keep it in the mouth, obviously they take it back and digest it. If, the, if they realise that something's wrong, sometimes a hook, they're trying to spit that out, which this rig is really, really effective for that reason. Because what, coupled with a heavy bait, what you've got here is a, a D that can slide up and down the hook. Now, when the carp sucks in, obviously the bait's going to be at the maximum length of the D. When they blow out, I think the weight of this bait pushing down to the eye of the hook also aids hooking in the bottom lip. So what you get is a sort of a weighted eye which helps pull the rig in. Now when the carp are sucking and blowing when they're already hooked before they decide to, uh, to hopefully run off, I think sucking and blowing only forces that hook into the, into the bottom lip because the bait is pushing down to the eye. It also means the bait's out the way of the penetration point, which is the hook. So hopefully, all in all, you get a scream intake and a carp on the bank. So let's get into how I actually tie this rig. Well, firstly, I take a little bit of tungsten loaded. This, on this occasion, it's weedy green and it's the semi-stiff. Now, it's testament to the coating on this hook link. Like I say, I haven't had to change the hook links on my rods for as long as I can remember. Now, usually after a fierce battle or two, the coating breaks on the knot. Seems not this stuff, this is really, really tough and it's perfect for the job. So I take about 15 inches of coated braid to start with. Just snip that off and then just down at one end which is the hook end I strip off about four inches of the coating with my teeth some people do use a stripper tool um, but I just strip it off my teeth which leaves 
a coated braid and an uncoated section. Now, the simplistic bit of this, and which is the bit that enables you to change the hook, is I'm doubling back the uncoated section and I'm tying an overhand knot as close to the break in the coating as I can possibly get. Really simple. And it's just a simple overhand knot loop straight through there. And then what it effectively gives you is a big loop of su supple braid on the end of a coated section. Now something I do with the knot that I've used to just uh, make that loop, I will burn the tag end because what I'm trying to do here is to create an anchor point for the putty. So the bigger the knot at this end, for me personally with this little burn down end, will enable the putty to anchor itself on that knot and not move. So there you go, I've just burnt that off. And it's simply a case of then assessing how long you want the rig. And as I say, I think I oh, like to use them around about 10 inches and I'm bending back the coated section to create another loop at the other end, simply overhand knot, and I like that loop to be around an inch and a half. So what it theoretically gives us is a hook link with two loops, one at the coated end and one at the stripped back uncoated end, just like this. Right, believe it or not, we're nearly done. It's really that simple. So before we steam it straight, because that's the final element of this rig, I'll show you how to put the hook bait and the hook, etc., onto the supple section of the hook link. Now I keep it supple, of course, because one of the benefits of having a supple section at the end is regardless of which direction the fish come in, that bait can easily be sucked in and bend over on itself if needed to go into the bottom lip. So let's take the tube in first. Now this is the important bit. Most questions I've had have been around what tubing do I use for the rig? Well, I use the 0.75 silicon tube. It's very flexible, but what most importantly, it tightly secures the slip D over the eye. Now, I don't use shrink tube. A quick tip on this really is that it doesn't need shrinking down, and when it does perish, rarely that it does, you can change it quickly without even needing to steam the kettle. So that goes on the loop of the rig first and foremost, and you need a, a baiting needle to do that because obviously it's 0.75 silicon, quite tight. So you just slide that over the loop end. So that's your silicon first, there you go, just like that. Once you put the silicon tube on the hook link, you're left with a loop. So the loop gets pushed through the eye of the hook from the bottom up, very important. And then slid down that loop because a tiny little micro hook ring swivel, just like this. And then you simply fold that loop back over the shank of the hook underneath to create a long D and pull it down to the desired position on the shank of the hook. Now this is really important, the desired position for me is crucial to the uh, effectiveness of the hook holds. So that 0.75mm tube and then just gets pushed over the eye. It's a little bit of a tight fit but it's actually exactly how you want it to be. And then I like the slip D to stop exactly where the point of the hook starts. Now what that does for me is make the hook point really heavy. Now if you bend it back too far around the shank of the hook I found that the hook point almost goes up in the fish's mouth on its side. Now I don't want that of course, I want it to be as heavy as possible because that's the bit and that's the effectiveness of why this is almost dropping into the bottom lip of the carp. So that's the, uh, that's the hook bit section sorted. So all we need to do now is add two little bits of putty to complete the rig, steam it and we're ready to go. So as I mentioned at the start, there's a bigger bit of putty about five mil away from the end of the tubing, just by the hook end. Now that aids, as, I, as I've mentioned, to pull the hook into the bottom of the fish's mouth. Really important. And then about three quarters of the way back up the hook link, I put a tiny little teardrop of putty and that just helps just to kick that hook link away and make sure that it lies flat to the bottom. And then last but not least, this big loop at the end of the hook link basically allows me to just push that through a ring swivel on a lead clip, put the hook link back through the loop and pull it down tight to the swivel. So if I need to change the hook link, it's a simple case of undoing that loop, teasing it off and putting a new one on. But rarely do I have to do that because all I have to do is change the hook after every fish. A really 
good point about this rig is its versatility. Now I fish it with a snowman bait because I like the heavy nature of the bait and most importantly when it goes into the fish's mouth I think it's uh, almost like an added mouthful. Um, you'll also notice that I like a really big curved shank hook. Again personal choice, you don't have to use that bigger hook, you can use whatever hook you like um, but that's my personal choice. Now one thing I would say the versatility is a key element and you can use this rig exactly as you would do for a pop-up but I pull the D a little bit further around the shank of the hook and you can add just a little bit more putty on the knot so what you'll get is a pop-up rig that just sits up like that again deadly effective really useful if you want to just change over from a bottom bait or a wafter to a pop-up but it's just one rig that does it all so all in all it's a really simple rig to tie I think for the cost of a hook after every fish, I would never compromise that. A new hook goes on regardless. Um, and even if I've done a blank night, I will change the hook because you know you get a little bit corrosion. There's various lakes with acidity um, or alkaline and that sometimes that corrodes the hook a little bit. So I change the hook after every session regardless. Now, the last two remaining parts as you put the putty on the knot, that's really crucial because that pulls the hook into the bottom of the fish's mouth. And uh, a little bit of a teardrop three quarters of the way up the hook link just allows it to kick away and lie flat to the bottom. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but it's really important to get across this isn't my rig, I didn't invent it, I've taken some really effective elements from rigs of past, slip these is nothing new, but I think for those guys that are just looking for a really consistent rig, which will allow you to just forget about rigs, you know, once you've got this on, it will do the job that you want it to do, and allow you to put all that energy into finding a feeding carp or two. This rig really has been a winner for me for the last, crikey, God knows how many years, and it rarely, rarely falls off. So yeah, all in all, a great rig, give it a go with any bait, as I say, and I'm sure it'll put a carp or two on the bank for you.